Hey guys, so I just got my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and I thought let me make a video and show you guys the settings and features that you should tweak and turn on on your brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra to get a better experience because right now out of the box the phone is kind of boring so we will make some useful changes and make the phone look awesome. And as always the link to the wallpaper that I'm using is in the video's description. Anyways, let's start the video. Okay, so once you finish the initial setup on your phone, this is how it's gonna look like. So this is pretty bare bones, there's really nothing on the phone right now. So the first change we're gonna make is to add the brightness slider to the drop down notification panel. You can see it's not there on the S22 Ultra. To get the brightness slider, drop down the notification panel, tap on these three dots and then select quick panel layout. Then tap on brightness control and select show always and now you will have the brightness control in the drop down notification panel and this cuts down on one extra step because you don't have to drop this thing all the way down just to change the brightness. The next thing you should do is turn on dark mode. So right now the system theme is white and that puts a lot of glare and strain on the eyes. And if you are using your phone in darkness, yeah, this white theme will not be easy on the eyes. So here's what I want you guys to do. Drop down the notification panel, go to settings, tap on display and change this from light to dark. And this will change the colors of the phone from white to black, which are arguably more pleasing on the eyes, especially if you are using your phone at night. I would also recommend that you change the way the phone displays notifications on the lock screen. So by default, the phone doesn't show you the contents of the notifications. It only shows you the icons. You have to tap on this and then the phone will show you the detailed notification. And I feel this is counterintuitive because it requires one extra step of tapping these icons just to see the notifications. So we can actually change this, drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to lock screen. Then tap on notifications and change this from icon only to details. And now you will see notifications in details on the lock screen. Now, if you don't want to see the contents of the notification, you can always enable hide content and then the notification content will be hidden. But since I don't have anything to hide, I'm going to turn off hide content. By the way, you can also change the clock that appears on the lock screen. Let me show you how. So while you are in the lock screen settings, tap on clock style and from over here you can change how the clock appears on the lock screen. You can even have an analog clock. So I think this one looks nice, done and done. So there you go, now we have a nice colorful clock on the lock screen. I've also changed the wallpaper and speaking of wallpaper, you can actually apply dark mode to the wallpaper itself. The way you do this is by pinching in, tap on wallpaper and style, scroll down and you have an option over here, apply dark mode to wallpaper. So this will dim the wallpaper as you can see. I like to keep this on because that reduces strain and glare on my eyes. So here's a fun fact for you guys. If you tap on the clock that appears on the lock screen, that will open up the lock screen widgets. So here you've got a couple of widgets. You've got the music player widget. You can seek through the song, weather widget, the calendar widget, alarms, voice recorder, and the digital well-being widget. You can actually customize these by tapping on the settings and enabling or disabling them from over here. So these are awesome, right? If you want to make the phone a little bit more legible on your Samsung device, do this. Drop down the notification panel, go to settings, tap on display, scroll down to font size and style and turn on bold font. And this makes the font a little bit bold and that kind of makes the font a little bit more legible. And if you want, you can also change the fonts. So tap on font style and select one from over here if you want more. Tab on download fonts and that will take you to the Galaxy Store. My favorite is Samsung Sans. I think this is a really nice font. One more thing that I don't like is the way Samsung has arranged all of these icons in the app drawer. I kind of prefer all of these to be in alphabetical order because that makes it very easy to search for a particular app. So if you want to change the way these are sorted, tap on these three dots, select sort and then select alphabetical order. I think alphabetical is better. And also I think these icons are a little bit too big. I think we can fit more icons on the home screen as well as the app drawer. To fit more icons, pinch in on the home screen and then go to settings. 
To fit more icons on the home screen, tap on home screen grid. Right now, it is set to 4 into 5, that is 4 icons horizontally and 5 icons vertically. I prefer 5 into 6, that is 5 icons horizontally and 6 icons vertically. So this option will give you a lot of space to fit your widgets and icons on the home screen. As for the app drawer, let's go back into settings and then tap on apps screen grid. Once again, I prefer 5 into 6, that is 5 icons horizontally and 6 icons vertically. And this allows us to fit a lot of icons on a single page in our app drawer. So this is a personal choice and it's totally up to you, but yeah, this is what I prefer. Now that we are done with the basic customization of the phone, let me show you some useful widgets that you might want to add to your home screen. But before that, you will have to customize how the home screen looks like. So by default, there are only two home screens. I kind of prefer having three home screens because that will allow me to add a couple of useful widgets. So to customize, pinch in and we will add another home screen over here and make this our main home screen by tapping over here. So what I've done is I've removed all of the icons and now we have three empty home screens to customize. So let's start adding widgets. Pinch in, tap on widgets and the first widget that I want to add is the calendar widget. I think I'm going to add this one because this one shows the month and the upcoming appointments and this will be on my left home screen. Now I want to make this transparent so settings, I'm going to switch off match with dark mode, select black and adjust the transparency. So that looks nice. All right, so what I've done is I've added all of these widgets off camera so that I don't waste your time showing you how to add each and every one of these. But let me quickly explain the functionality of these widgets. So here we have got the list view of the calendar. This one will show you all your upcoming events and appointments and you can create a new one just by tapping on the plus button. And you can find this under widgets, calendar, and here is the list view. Then we have got the Samsung health widget. This is a pedometer and this will count how many steps you have taken. Then we have got the digital wellbeing widget. This one will show you your screen on time and for how long you have been using apps on your smartphone. Then we have got the countdown timer. Again, you will find this under the calendar. And this will count the days down for a specific event. On the second page, we have got the dual clock widget. You can set this to show time for two different countries. Then we've got the weather forecast widget. You know what, we can make this widget a little bit smaller. I've also added the Samsung notes widget and I think this is the single most useful widget on the phone because this will let you take notes with a single tap. That is extremely convenient. And finally, on the last page, I've got the Gmail widget, which will show me all of the new mails that arrive in my inbox. And tapping on this, I can create a new mail. So extremely useful. By the way, if you are wondering, all of these widgets are pre-installed on every Samsung phone. So you will have all of these available right out of the box on your Galaxy Note 22 Ultra. By the way, I've left some empty space here on purpose so that I can add icons of applications that I use frequently just like I've done on my previous phone. By the way, I've got a detailed video on how to set up the home screen on a Samsung phone so do make sure to check this video out if you want to customize your home screen even further. Alright, let's move on. You can also hide the navigation bar that appears at the bottom of the screen. And this has a couple of advantages, mainly it will give you a little bit more screen real estate area for your content. So let me show you how. Drop down the notification panel, go to settings, tap on display, scroll down to navigation bar and over here change this from buttons to swipe gestures. And while you're at it, also disable gesture hint and show button to hide keyboard. If you don't disable show button to hide keyboard, you will always get this black bar at the bottom of the screen whenever the keyboard is open. So you should disable this if you want the keyboard to fit properly on the screen. So swipe gestures are awesome. It will turn the edges of your screen into the back key. So just swipe like this to go back and swiping in from the bottom will take you to the home screen and if you swipe up and hold, that will open up recents. So you should turn on swipe gestures if you want a better full screen experience on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. And many people have asked me what keyboard I'm using on my Samsung Galaxy smartphone. Well, this is the SwiftKey keyboard. And you can download the SwiftKey keyboard from the Play Store and I think this is a far superior keyboard compared to what Samsung has to offer. 
So this keyboard is awesome. It's got plenty of features, but the feature that I really like are the built-in themes. You can choose one that matches your mood. I prefer the carbon dark yellow and you can even create your very own theme using your own photo. So this is awesome, right? Samsung Galaxy smartphones have a feature that lights up the edges of the screen whenever the phone receives a new notification. And this makes the phone look awesome, especially at night. But by default, this feature is disabled, so you'll have to turn it on. Let me show you how. Okay, so drop down the notification panel, go to settings, then tap on notifications. First off, make sure that the notification pop-up style is set to brief, then tap on brief pop-up settings, and then tap on edge lighting style. From this list, just pick the edge lighting style that you like. I absolutely love the glitter lighting style because it looks so cool. And in the settings, I like to make it a little bit wide and change the duration from short to long because it will stay on for a little bit longer. But yeah, now whenever the phone gets a new notification, the edges of the screen will light up like this. You should also make sure that show even while screen is off is enabled so that the edge lighting appears even while the screen is turned off, just like this. So that looks so cool, right? Samsung smartphones have a feature called edge panels, and these will give you easy access to your favorite apps, screenshot tool, and a lot more. Let me show you how this works. The location of the edge panels is shown by this white line over here and this is called the edge panel handle and you swipe in like this to open up the edge panels. Right now there is only a single edge panel because we have to configure them. So here is what I want you guys to do. Drop down the notification panel, go to settings, tap on display, scroll down to edge panels, then tap on panels. By default, the apps edge panel will be enabled but you can enable many more edge panels from over here. So I want you guys to enable the smart select edge panel, the weather panel, tools, and the reminder edge panel. And these are just the basic edge panels on the phone. If you want more, tap on the Galaxy Store and you can browse all of the free edge panels available for download. So I've just downloaded the calendar and the calculator panel from the Galaxy Store. So check this out. If I swipe in like this, now we have all of these different edge panels available for use. So this is the compass. You can tap on these three dots and select different tools. You also have the ruler. So this is really, really nice. The next one is the calendar and the calculator panel. But the best part about these edge panels is that they are always available. So it doesn't matter what you are doing on the phone, whenever you swipe in like this, you will always have edge panels available for use. The smart select edge panel is one of my favorites because if you select the screenshot option, this will let you extract text out of screenshots. So if you've just taken a screenshot and if you tap on the T button, that will extract the text out of screenshots. How amazing is that guys? Edge panels is something that you should start using right now on your Galaxy smartphone. By the way, you can customize this edge panel handle. So we will go back into the edge panels, tap on handle, and this will let you place the handle a little bit down over here. You can also change its size and make it completely transparent. So you don't have that white line over there, but yeah, the edge panel handle is still there. So yes, I would suggest that you tweak these settings according to your liking. If you don't use Bixby, then you might want to change the behavior of this button because if you long press this, that will launch the Bixby personal assistant. And if you're like me and if you don't use Bixby, you can change the behavior of this button. So drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to advanced features, then tap on side key. Under press and hold, change this from wake Bixby to power off menu. And now when you long press this button, that will give you the power off menu instead of launching Bixby. So if you don't use Bixby, you should absolutely do this. You can also add your name, custom message, or your contact information to the lock screen. The way you do this is by dropping down the notification panel, going into settings, Scroll down to lock screen, then tap on contact information and type in whatever you want over here. You can even type in emojis. So now the phone is going to show emojis on the lock screen. So that is a little customization tip for you all. Also, someone was asking, how do you disable these application icons that pop up whenever you open up recents? Well, in the recents, tap on these three dots, select settings and disable show recommended apps. 
and now the phone will not show those applications whenever you open up recents. And lastly, open up the Galaxy Store, tap on these three lines, then tap on updates and update all of the Samsung apps on the smartphone. So this will update all of the built-in apps such as the Gallery, Samsung Files and every other Samsung app on your smartphone. And the final thing that you should do is check for updates. So go to settings, scroll all the way down, tap on software update and then tap on download and install. As you can see, there is a software update available for download. It is always a good idea to download and install the latest updates on your brand new smartphone because latest updates will always include bug fixes and product improvements. All right, so I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, please make sure to press the thumbs up button. That helps out a lot. And stay tuned for more videos on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.